All right. Well, welcome to the call. Uh, I'm Michael Cody, and I'm one of the partners here at the Coach's Coach. And I'm excited today because on this call, we're going to be talking about something that I think a lot of business coaches who start their practice are very interested in understanding, which is what is the what, what's the impact of creating a lifestyle coaching practice? What can it do for you? Uh, and and what is the power of a mini retirement or a sabbatical? Uh, what can it do for you? And we have on the call today, and we're interviewing uh, founder of the Coach's Coach, Eric Dumbach, and and uh, he has just come off of a really fantastic sabbatical experience, and there's some great insights that if you're sitting there right now as a coach and you're saying, you know what, I'm building this business to create a lifestyle that's going to get me what I want, give me more time for my family, more time to explore the things I want in life. Uh, many people starting coaching businesses are at a stage in life where they really want to be able to maintain great financial results, but it's really, really important to them that they maintain a certain level of lifestyle as well. And so I'm excited to have uh, Eric on the call with us today. Eric, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing so good and just so glad, Michael, that we can take a few minutes and uh, just make this recording for people to listen to. So thank you, man, for being a part of this. This is great. Awesome. Great. So, Eric, first and foremost, who is this call for? I mean, if they're listening to this call right now, who should be paying attention right now? You know, this call really is for anybody who wants to build a business that's all about lifestyle, okay? And I want to make a distinction between a growth business and a lifestyle business. You know, I guess earlier in my career, Michael, I, I had this ambition to create you know, a whole bunch of growth businesses and, you know, a growth business being defined roughly as a business with a sole objective of just growing quickly, creating a lot of revenue, a lot of profit, EBITDA, you know, a business that can be sold for a lot of money. You know, and I did some of that and I sold a business for a lot of money. But uh, I'm in my 40s now. I've got a wife who I love very dearly. I've got four children, a couple teenagers. You know, I'm heavily involved in my church and, uh, you know, what's become so much more important to me over the past few years is a lifestyle business. And this is a business that allows me to invest in the things, Michael, actually that matter more to me than my career. And there are things that matter more to me than my career. You know, my, my relationship with my lovely bride of all these years and my kids and serving in my church and, and having time for, you know, friendships and, and things that matter to me. And so, this call, to answer your question, this is really for people who want to understand the mechanics of creating a business, particularly a coaching business, that facilitates the kind of lifestyle uh, that many of us dream of. Um, you can certainly build a coaching business that's a growth business that can be turned into a business that provides a lot of cash flow and resale value, You know, a business that can actually be sold sure. for a lot of money. But coaching businesses can be built around lifestyle, and that's what really this recording is for. Okay, fantastic. So if you're bent on world domination and having you know 900 <laughs> offices globally in your coaching firm, uh, you're probably not going to be as tuned into this message as what we're saying. Uh, and and this is really probably for that audience out there uh, that that's uh, come across our buddy Tim Ferriss. Tell us a little bit about your experience uh, with with Tim, a very famous book, obviously in the Four Hour Work Week and all yeah. the rest. Uh, and this has become a big hot topic in the world is this concept of prioritizing lifestyle and cash flowing lifestyle and all the rest. Yeah, I remember reading that book, I don't know whether it was 2007, 2008, read it through, read it through again, and I've taken it off the shelf and read it a number of times over the years, and, and I've told people, you know, either love him or hate him, and, and you know, sometimes a combination of both, uh, <laughs> because he's just so brash, so bold, you know, he was a young man when he wrote the book, uh, you know, not a lot of life experience, not a lot of commitments to family and other things, you could, so you could feel a little, you know, like you kind of hate the, that aspect of it, and yet... What he's done, you can't argue with. And, you know, the, the, some of the choices he's made in terms of how he spends his time are admirable. And so when I read the book, I thought, okay, I'm going to filter this through my value system. You know, for me, it's not going out and winning wrestling competitions over in East Asia. It's not about, <laughs> you know, going and getting drunk and whatever. That, those aren't my values. But the things that matter to me, I can achieve by applying the principles I learned there. So, so that became a bit of a, a wake up call uh, for me when I read that book and said, you know, I, I've got to be about building businesses that allow me to really invest in the things that I want and not just defer indefinitely, you know, the things that are important to me now. And I have a coach, right? We all should have coaches, especially those who are coaching professionals. And uh, I have a coach, his name is Doug, Doug Fike. And it, one of the things he said is, you can't just defer forever. The things that you say are important to you. If you want to take long mini retirements with your wife, if you want to invest heavily in, in your kids while they're teenagers and, 
and all that, you got to do it. I mean, you know, time yeah. marches on. And that's one of the things I love about the message in his book. He says, hey, you, you'll be 60, 70 before you know it, and you will have wild away your entire life behind a desk, or you can build a business that allows you to go and do things right now. And that, that was a, a message that resonated a lot for me. Well, and, and really, the, the concept of mini retirement is not a really a new idea. I mean, this has been around for, for a very long time. It's just been known by a different term uh, that commonly is used as sabbatical. So tell me about it. Because, Doug, I know obviously well, and, and Doug is a fantastic coach and mentor to some of the top world leaders out there. Yeah. Um, and, and so you're very blessed to have him as a coach. And, yeah. and he focuses very heavily on what he terms obviously a sabbatical. So unpack that sabbatical because it's not just going and sticking your feet in the sand. There's actually a lot of depth behind it and, and the thinking behind it. So help me connect mini retirement, sabbatical. What are we talking about there? Right, right. You know, sabbatical is a term you'll hear a lot, certainly in religious circles, but also academic circles. And you're right. And my coach, Doug, is, you know, one of his big themes is if you want to be all that you can be and achieve your destiny on the planet, you're going to have to take times of sabbatical. You know, if you look up sabbatical, you know, by way of definition, it means an extended absence in the career of an individual in order to achieve something. And it's typically people will go away and they'll write books and they'll, you know, do research and they'll study and, you know, they'll do all that kind of stuff. You know, and that's more of an academic kind of approach to the, the subject of sabbatical. But uh, I actually have resonated more powerfully with the, the meaning assigned to the word sabbatical in the religious communities. And the idea of a sabbatical, at least in the, in the wisdom literature of the major world religions, really comes down to this, is that sabbatical is ceasing from your work. Okay, mm. it's taking a break from productivity, mm. and and so Doug was coaching me and has coached me for years, and I've done many sabbaticals, or really short sabbaticals, many times over the years, but this time I decided I'm going to really stretch myself, and, and we took a five week mini retirement or a five week sabbatical in the Caribbean, and it was a it was a great stretch for me. I never just gone away and with my family, forgot about my business for five weeks at a time before in my life, and. Uh, mm. It was transformational. It was really transformational because I made sure that I ceased from all my productivity and labor. I didn't work. <laughs> you know, I would have occasional email exchanges, very short ones, you know, with folks on the team. But basically, every day I got an email that said, hey, Eric, all is well, you know. <laughs> so I knew you guys were alive, you know, back here doing the stuff. But, but there were some amazing things that happened to me because I had stopped my productivity and then that created space for me to do the things that, you know, in the educational circles, people generally associate with the notion of a sabbatical. So there was a lot of time to write and reflect, pray, think, dream, create things. And I really came back with a whole, whole new set of gains because I did that, Michael. So that's, that's a little deeper concept, isn't it, than just a mini retirement, right? A mini retirement, as we, as we talked about early, can tend to just communicate that, hey, you're just going away and having a good time. But the, the notion of a sabbatical, much deeper, it means resting from work and allowing the fallow ground of your soul to really replenish and, and see what new things kind of grow up in that space. And that's exactly what happened for me. I mean, so many of the, because you know, we're talking to business coaches right now, and, and I would say it's a pretty fair statement that so many of the clients, the end clients that we coach as business coaches, they're really not looking to become uh, Bill Gates or Donald Trump and take mm. over the world. They're really looking to create a business that funds a lifestyle that they really aspire to. So, uh, is that a, would that be fair from your perspective? I really think it is. I mean, you'll meet a certain small percentage that you know want to take over the world, as you say. But for most of them, it's about lifestyle. It's about family. It's about spirituality. It's about leaving a legacy and achieving things on the planet. And you just can't do that if you're not, number one, healthy in your own soul and spirit. And number two, frankly, Michael, it's really much harder to change the world if you're neglecting your marriage, neglecting your children. And marriages and children, the only way to nurture those really is by taking a lot of quality time. And so, yeah, I mean, most entrepreneurs do this thing for the lifestyle. Uh, yeah. I agree. This is exceptionally practical. If you're sitting thinking, okay, yeah, great, I'm a busy business coach right now. I'm trying to get my practice built. You know, is this really relevant to where I'm at right now? What would you say to that idea right there if someone was kind of posing that question? Well, you know, it, there is an absolute path from where you are now as a business coach to getting to the point where your business coaching business can fund the kind of lifestyle that we're talking about. There's a path, and, and we can certainly talk about that on this call, <laughs> but there yeah. is a path. And 
my experience has been in, in, in these sorts of things is that as a coach, we always deserve to be out in front of our clients. Um, so if, if we're leading our clients by demonstration of creating businesses that create the outcomes we want. So if you're on the call and what you want is a lifestyle business, and I'm going to guess you're going to tend to attract clients that want the same things. Uh, mm. It's just sort of been my experience, anyways, so. that, that you probably deserve to have some integrity in this area of having actually built your business in a way that can actually deliver it, not just talk about it. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, for us as a team, obviously, we've prioritized it because there is a direct impact here, most importantly on it. goes back to that old principle Stephen Covey talked about in the seven habits of highly effective people. Habit number seven, sharpen the saw. Mm-hmm. If, if you don't stop from your labor to make sure you are sharp as a being, that you, you're mentally sharp, physically sharp, emotionally sharp, that you, he doesn't call it recreation, he called it recreation. Yeah. In, in that book. So, so I think this, this very much plays in with that principle, uh, of stopping to make sure spiritually, mentally, emotionally, uh, socially, relationally, that you're not dull, you're not distracted, you're not disconnected from the most important things in your world. So I know for us, this conversation and journey actually started 2009, uh, when you were on a cross country trip with your family and you guys stopped out here at Arizona and spent some time with our family. Yeah, that's right. We were in a two week kind of vacation mode and most of our family vacations have kind of peaked out at two two and a half three weeks and you know the interesting thing is about the time your soul begins to unwind and relax and this is probably true for most everybody in the call you know you're a week in and just as you're beginning to unwind and relax your soul starts to get anxious again because you see the end line <laughs> you know, the vacation is about to end right Yep. Well, and I think it's a common thing too for a lot of coaches, the stress of potentially losing clients over a vacation period. And there's a lot of other components that can cause them to not really engage into any kind of real meaningful recreation in that time frame. Yeah. Uh, they might have some distraction, but it's not real true recreation. So we, in 2009, we made the decision this was going to be a lifestyle business at the coaches coach, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We, you and I agreed on that. We agreed on his families. In fact, our families were playing together in your pool and we said, look, we really need to convert the businesses that were growing into lifestyle businesses and we made that decision together in 2009 and we had a great time as families you know but we said this is too short we've got to we really got to force this issue so we set a priority goal and, and the first little taste that we took was in uh, 2010 as a, as a team as the founders of the business yeah. uh, you and Deborah and then Stacy and I we, we took a really amazing short but <laughs> amazing yeah. 10 days in Tuscany yeah. uh, and, and went throughout Italy and, and we got to stay in an 11th century monastery executive retreat center right. um, and, and took that time to really invest with Doug and, and Charlene in, in really studying this this greater issue of growth as leaders and, and the need for these sabbaticals and so you said goal 2011 you guys were going to take your first extended mini retirement and you've done that now and here we are on the other side of it yeah and i think it'd be good to talk about you know what was the impact of completely disconnecting for five weeks and what benefits did it yield to you personally emotionally your relationships your business, I mean, what was the impact of it? Yeah, you know, and I just want to say to the listeners, we're going to get very practical here later in the call about how you do this thing, okay? So I don't want you to lose heart as I start talking about this benefit stuff because I know when I used to hear these kinds of things from the guys like Tim Ferriss and other times, I just would go, oh, really, is it possible to take a month, month and a half, you know, move with my family to another country and do them? And it is possible, right? And we're going to talk about how to do that. So just, you know, stick with us here, but... But Michael, you mentioned, you know, the four of us going over to, to Italy in 2010. And it was really amazing because, you know, you and I and our wives, we walked the streets of Rome. You know, we walked mm-hmm. the streets of Florence. We saw these amazing places where you have buildings that are several thousand years old standing next to buildings that are hundreds of years old standing next to buildings that are decades old. And we saw all that and we spent time walking through the vineyards and the olive groves. And thinking about life and talking about, uh, you know, our families and life, we experienced all that together. And it was very powerful. And we were sitting there with our mentors and coaches. And, and I realized there are things that I love. And those things that I love are going to go with me into eternity. You know, mm. my businesses are not going to go with me into eternity. My bank accounts are not going to go with me into eternity. And as important as those things are, the things that are going to go with me, I think, this is just my belief, right? You can take it or leave it. But the things I believe are going to go with me into eternity are my relationships, right? And it was, 
when we were in Italy, you know, that, and I've taken vacations before, but in other countries, but there was something very special about that for me. And when again, it was you and me, partners growing this business, our wives experiencing things and said, we need to make this a lifestyle. So that was like an hors d'oeuvre. And so, <laughs> and so we, we started making plans and you were gracious enough to hold down the fort here uh, while I took the lead and, and did this thing. So to your question, you know, what was the impact? I want to start with the impact upon me personally and upon my family, and then we'll talk about the impact on the business because I think the two are so related. But at a very personal level, it took me at least a week or so to really wind down. And a concept that's been written about, and I forget the guy's name, unfortunately, right now who wrote the book, but he, he talked about these transition periods. We have endings, neutral zone, and beginnings. So there was about a week where I was just ending things and, and getting things in order uh, emotionally as, mu as much as anything. And then there was this long period of a few weeks where I was in neutral zone and I just, I wasn't producing. And one of the things that happened to me during that period of time was I really began to value again solitude. I mean, I would wake up at 4.30, Michael, because I live here on the East Coast and we were in mountain time down in the Caribbean and the West Bay Islands right off the coast of Honduras. So it was a two hour difference. So I would wake up at 4.30 because my body thought, thought it was 6.30. So I would go out and I would see the sun rising up. And I would literally stay out there from 4.30 to 7.30 or even 8. I mean, we're talking hours. I had my iPhone, you know, I'm listening to, you know, worshipful music, music that helps me really connect that way. I would have sometimes my Bible with me, my journal, uh, walking the beautiful uh, Caribbean beaches. It was just an amazing thing. And, and it really connected me with the importance of solitude and the spiritual disciplines that have been so important to me over the years. Now, what that's done for me since I've come home is it has enabled me and inspired me uh, in a fresh way to establish boundaries, Michael, that we all say are important in our lives. So I have, in a fresh way, reestablished new boundaries around the things that will sharpen the saw, right, things that will renew my own soul. Because entrepreneurialism has a tendency to produce this frenetic environment around us that just encroaches on our personal space. It can be very hard to defend ourselves against the tyranny of the urgent, right, all the things that yep. just seem so important. But being a way like that refreshed all that for me and allowed me to almost redig the wells, right? Just rebuild some of these core disciplines that, you know, I've enjoyed in my life over the years, but have struggled to maintain, if I'm honest, you know, several hours a day of solitude. I just have found the last couple of weeks since I've been back that it's just been so much easier to make good quality decisions and to think creatively and do all that because I've reestablished some of those disciplines of open space, solitude and, and rest. So great disciplines for me. I probably wrote hundreds of pages, a lot of journaling. I came up with some new intellectual property, of course, new frameworks, ways of looking at the world, things that will eventually be productized. But that's down the road, and it's really ancillary to the other benefits. The important thing is that there was a certain reservoir of creativity that was re-drilled while I was away, and that's priceless. I mean, it's priceless, isn't it? So I'm there with my wife. I'm there with my children. We were in an environment for most of our time there uh, that my wife and children absolutely love. Said, you know, they love the beach, right? So it was a setting where we were able to make memories. There was such an expanse of space while we were there that I was able to focus on each of my kids one at a time. I was able to focus specific blocks of time on my individual children, one at a time, going out and doing little adventures. You know, let's take a water taxi 10 miles down the island and, and go eat somewhere, or let's go scuba diving or snorkeling or parasailing or zip lining. Or, but I could take my kids one-on-one -on -one and go have an experience and invest in them, look into their eyes, know their souls, talk to them about their past, talk to them about their future. I mean, just amazing to be able to make those kind of investments. You know, our kids are only teenagers once. And, and so one of the most precious things for me and my family was being able to make investments of time and attention and focus that these kids of mine will remember for the rest of their lives. Dad was fully present to me in those moments. Dad was investing. Dad wanted to know what was going on in my soul. I was sharing his values with me, and I was listening. In a, I mean, the level of influence that I was able to have in those times because of how present I was to them. Again, priceless. Now, there was no crisis that precipitated this trip, Michael. You know, my relationship with my kids are awesome, but th this was a chance to just go to a whole other level. And one of the comments one of my kids made, she said, the time that we spent with my parents and the kinds of stuff they were able to share with me and talk with me about while we were there just made me fall in love with my parents at a much deeper level than ever. Now, that's priceless, Michael. I mean, Oof. all of us with children, right, we know 
we just know uh, what's at stake. I mean, if we have our kids' hearts, right, and they, our kids love us, you know, we're gonna, we don't have anything to worry about in terms of the kind of things that could influence them or, or the wrong paths they could go down, right? Yep. But the, the things that we fear happening to our kids can really be averted if we have our kids' hearts, right? If, if we're in love with our kids and our kids are in love with us. And so this was a time of just, you know, just building on that whole good foundation, frankly, that we've laid over the years and, and just adding more weight to it, weight to it, weight to it, so that there's a solid relational foundation as we head into these, these precious, irreplaceable and, you know, to be fair, uh, at, you know, according to the perspective of a lot of people, risky years, right? I mean, but more than ever, I'm feeling confident about the years that are coming for my children as they head into the teenage years, and I'm feeling more and more confident because of, of this investment. So great investment uh, with my kids and then my wife. I mean, how can I even begin to explain, you know, the impact on our marriage? I mean, we have a great, healthy marriage. My wife and I have been married for 17 years, but the time spent, again, irreplaceable. Uh, there's just a level of intimacy that develops when you're not in a hurry and you just can spend time with each other. And uh, so without getting too mushy, I'll leave it at that. But it was <laughs> really valuable. I think we want to pause for a second. If you're listening to this right now, what you should be tuning into is that when we say lifestyle business, um, it's more than any phrase. It's more than a marketing term. It's more than something the franchise or put into the brochure. It is about what does that lifestyle look like for you? If it's not sitting on the Bay Islands off of the coast of Honduras, you know, parasailing with your kids and, and enjoying one-on-one -on -one time with them and, and having time to really focus some just core uninterrupted, no emails, no iPhones, no distractions, no SMS text messaging for the kids. Uh, it, there's no Xbox. It's time invested as people connecting with the most important people in their lives. Mm. And if that's valuable to you, then I know very few industries where you can create that kind of lifestyle as easily as the business coaching industry. So it's it's key to tune into this because while this may feel like uh, a bit of a fanciful journey if you've not experienced it yet, the business you're in, if you're listening to this as a business coach right now, can deliver your version of this to you if you structure it properly. If not, it can become a great slave driver like any other business. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> but, but structured properly and done in the way we're going to discuss a little later in this call, this business you're in right now, I don't care where you're at, or how long you've been in this industry, can be structured to deliver that. It's often said you can tell what a person loves by what they give their time, money, and attention to. And time and attention to me are the, probably the more important of those two things. So the fact that you made a decision, obviously, based on your value structure that, you know what, uh, you're, you're amazing kids, you're awesome wife, they were a bigger priority of time than being able to necessarily add more dollars, although the, you know, things like business growth and all that are available if you properly structure a business sabbatical. I want to tune into that because I think so often in, in the doing of it, we miss the why, yeah. and if you're not tuned into your why, and if it's not that vibrantly real to you, if you can't picture and understand what that would lifestyle would look like if you structured your business to deliver it, what is that lifestyle thing you're getting along the journey? What are those moments? Because no one hits the end of their life and says, "Gee, I wish I could have attended one more meeting and, and worked <laughs> another hour in my office," you know. But someday down the road, you know, Lord willing, when you walk your daughter down the aisle. Yeah. To give her away in marriage, uh, she'll have an experience of what a father and a husband and a man should be like yeah. based on a dad who prioritized her, made her important, and invested in her. Yes. And your sons will go forward in life understanding that the family and the priority of centralizing, investing in the family, not just money, not just giving them a great lifestyle and a good house and nice cars and all that stuff, that trappings, okay, but in the substance of the most important thing you can give a child, which is time and attention, undivided yeah. attention, not letting them talk at the side of your head while you're still texting and emailing. Yeah, um, that's so true. You know, you know, but really being invested, knowing their hearts and their ambitions and their desires, uh, and knowing where they're at in their growth as a person, and being able to to really connect at that level with them and help them move on, uh, and staying connected with a spouse because many times for many of the coaches I know, their spouses are not necessarily invested in their businesses right alongside of them. Yeah, you know, so, that's such a good point. And I mean, this is one of the things my coach you know, said to me. He said, look, here's the deal. If you're not doing things with your family, you know, that translate the success you're having in business into real, practical, tangible benefits. It was really shocking when he said this to me. He said, you're defrauding your family. <laughs> that's what mm -hmm. he said to me at a coaching call. He's like, you're promoting the value of an entrepreneurial lifestyle, but if you're family doesn't experience it, it's not real. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
it's very powerful what can happen out of a properly structured business. For me, the word integrity gets confused for a lot of people because they, they go into words of morality and, uh, and things like that. For me, integrity is congruency. Um, you know, you know, if I have a piece of cheap furniture that's got, you know, veneer on the surface, but it's really particle board underneath, it might mm-hmm. look like oak furniture, but if I cut it in half, you're going to see that it's really only oak furniture on the outside, and what's on the inside is actually just particle board. Yeah. But if I take a Louisville Slugger oak bat and I cut that thing in half, uh, you're going to see that it's oak on the outside and it's oak on the inside, and so the integrity of that baseball bat is that it's consistent. Yeah. Okay. It is so. So if we espouse and train people on how to achieve the lifestyle they want from their businesses, the question is: Are we living a life that's like veneer, or are we living a life that's congruent? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's a it's a really hard look in the mirror. But if any industry, if any group of people, and if you're listening to me right now as a business coach, this is what we do as an industry. We take we help people look and face where they are now, honestly where they want to be, and then what's the gap, and we coach the gap. So if you're listening to this right now, and you're looking at where you are now, honestly, is your lifestyle or the business is not anywhere near giving you the lifestyle you are congruently, that your values espouse, then you really need to be tuning into this message we're talking about today, because uh, what we're going to set up, and we give you the practical stuff, the practical stuff, I think, is relatively useless, Eric, without the mindset. That's right. The mindset has to be I am going to build a business and demand and require my business to deliver the stuff that makes me congruent with the values that I espouse, right? Absolutely. It would have been much easier for me in some ways to not do this sabbatical, this mini retirement. Yeah, in some some ways it would have been much easier to do. It was inconvenient in a lot of ways, and it stretched all of us and so forth, but it's beyond priceless in retrospect. Yeah, it's the old important but not necessarily urgent. Right. You had a couple of really busy years leading up to this. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we launched several new membership programs in 2010, several right. major product launches in 2011. There was just a lot that was going on. Okay, so 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 that that's a huge insight into the impact on a personal level. You, you know, you've got this time to actually uh, decompress, to focus, to invest in things that are really, truly most important to you. So if you're listening to this and you don't have kids or you're not married, uh, you know, there's there's a whole world of things, though, that you could discover about yourself, about where you want to be when you give yourself the space to actually think and connect with your deepest core values. And, and so it, you don't have to necessarily be married 17 years with five kids and all the rest. You can actually you know, be single and, and whatever, but the value of truly hearing your own voice, connecting with the great, you know, what's greater out there than you, and connecting to that and actually getting clarity, it's, it's shocking how much disruption and disturbance that the average person we allow into our lives until we actually force ourselves to get someplace like an island without good cell signal <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the Caribbean yeah. and suddenly realize, wow, there's a lot of voices talking in my head, but how many of them are actually me? You know? <laughs> it's so true, man. <laughs> Let's talk about the practical impact stuff. Let's get down to the nitty-gritties of business because obviously you, you're an entrepreneur. You have a business. Um, you couldn't just walk out the door. So there were structural decisions you made. There were plans that you made. There were things you did. But what was the net result business-wise? Because I know a lot of people who, as because we coach coaches, so many of them go on a one- or two-week vacation and come back to negative client growth. Yeah. Uh, you know, They come back to financial cash flow troubles. A lot of times you have to work like a madman up to the, the end of the, the before the sabbatical, and then when you come back, you're going to have to work like a madman to pay the piper for the time you took off. Um, how did it run for you? Tell, tell us about the actual business impact. What came out of the sabbatical based on how you structure the business and everything else? Yeah, I would say the longest time away from my business before this had been three weeks. When I include the travel, this was actually twice as long the longest time I've been away from my business. So I did a lot of the same things that I always do, which is um, I took all of my one-on-one coaching clients and set up a process that added a lot of value to my coaching clients, setting up coaching sessions with really great coaches, including yourself, Michael, thank you very much, who were able to add value. Uh, we actually rolled out a new product, educational product, while I was on sabbatical uh, that added a lot of value. So I did a bunch of the kinds of things to really prepare and make sure that my client base would receive value while I was gone. More important than all of that, 
is you and I have spent the last uh, number of years building a really great quality team of people, and uh, it was the team that ran the business. So the business ran without me. We did two completely different product launches. One was a membership program. The other was a product while uh, I was gone, and I did a bunch of work, of course, to get ready for that, but you know, you and the rest of the team rolled that out while I was gone. Because of our e-marketing automation, uh, you know, there were blog posts and tweets and Facebook things and all this stuff was going on while I was away. And, uh, I remember when I got back, I was, you know, just trolling through some of the email and there was an email there and there was some Facebook posts and, and replies to Twitter feeds while I was gone and people were like typing things back to me, you know, telling me things about what I had just posted and I hadn't actually written any of it. I mean, the blog posts were written by Katie and our team and the, so people were interacting with me while I was gone. So, that was kind of fascinating. But what that did is it just allowed our database to grow and which the receptivity and interest of our database in our business grew more because all that stuff was happening in the background while I was away. And so I came back and it was very easy for me to just turn on the sales machine once again and just start selling coaching contracts because all of the marketing was happening in the background. So, uh, oh, and you know, then there's the fact that we launched a brand new division of our company, Michael, uh, while I was away. And, of course, you were exceedingly instrumental in that. But we launched Steam Online Marketing, a, a new division of the company, which yep. does uh, you know automated e-marketing for people, coaches, and other businesses. And, and that rolled out while I was away. And uh, the, the effectiveness of the e-marketing automation and the sales pipeline that was built certainly while I was away allowed me to come back and literally within the first two weeks of being back converted hundreds of thousands of dollars in new business. <laughs> right? So, I mean, it, you know, the results were good. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, that, that's uh, that's pretty good for uh, getting to take five weeks off and then come back and and have a full pipeline and and basically in the following two weeks convert you know several hundred thousand dollars worth of contracts uh, in a two week period. I mean, that's I think most people would like to come back from their vacation and have that, that experience. Well, this was uh, certainly only the best return from a vacation or in this case a sabbatical that I've ever had. Oh, yeah. As you said earlier in the call, we've been working at this thing for a long time. How do we build a business? And this was the biggest stretch for me. And I, we didn't mention this before in the call, but actually. Actually, it's more. It was almost like a seven-week break because the first two weeks I was away in early July, I went with my extended family out to the beach here in the East Coast, came home for a few days, and then went down to the Caribbean. So, for all intents and purposes, I was really away from the from the business for about seven weeks in a row, with only a couple of days back. So, it, it was uh, it was definitely a big stretch for us, but it definitely worked out. Yeah, well, and I think what's important too is if you're listening to this, if, if you're a subscriber to the Coach's Coach system right now, every tool that we use to set up the business to allow this to happen from a lifestyle perspective is in our system. We, there's, we don't hold anything back. There's nothing that we're hiding and going, oh, this is our secret strategy. No, no, the best stuff is in the e-marketing pipeline. It's in the Rockstar selling system. It's in the different tools within the Coach's Coach system so that if you're sitting there right now, you have access to those things, uh, you could be using these things right now in your business. If you're just a follower of the Coach's Coach and you get our free materials, guess what? We give you a lot of the insights that you could get started on a lot of these pieces on your own without ever having, you know, even subscribed to us. Uh, we give away great, great <laughs> we material. We give and, away and, and if you really want a sneak peek, you can actually come in and take a 10-day trial of the system and see everything unhindered. Yeah. Uh, so you know that we're not kidding. We give away uh, our best stuff uh, on how you set up a business in this industry to really maximize profitability, lifestyle, leverage. Uh, and, and I know we're about to move into some really practical stuff that was done to set this up, but you've already started to, to kind of allude to some of it. But I, I just want to stay. If you're sitting there right now and you're going, okay, great, but how do I do this? It's all right in front of you. You literally have to just click. You just have to <laughs> click and implement, okay? Yeah. Click and implement. Okay, do yeah. it, okay? Uh, and, and it really does work. Is there a learning curve? Yes, there's a learning curve with anything you do in life. Yeah. But yeah. W- we've taken our last, you know, almost, uh, well, 20 years between the two of us in the coaching industry right. and now the years uh, in the info marketing industry and e-marketing world right. and marrying the best strategies of coaching with, with e-marketing yeah. to create systems that, that can create this for you. So if you're listening, go, can I do it? Yes, it's right in front of you. Yes, it's sequential. It's step-by-step. You can even get personally mentored if you want to have somebody walk you through it. Yeah. You can get that. So there's no excuse. 
There is no excuse to be sitting there as a slave to your own business trying to train other people how not to be slaves to their businesses. Right. That's just completely insane. Yeah. Okay, you should not be doing that. Uh, we just strongly recommend you want to be congruent. You want to have the lifestyle. There's no need to have any excuses. You can literally click a button, see it for 10 days. If you don't like it, walk away, do it your own way. That's fine. But we're giving you truth here. This is real stuff. This does work. Uh, and the difference is whether you use it or not. That part, unfortunately, we can't control. But I will tell you, we're using it viciously for ourselves. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we're aggressively implementing all this stuff for ourselves because we know the value of it. Yeah. And we live it. We have now for a decade each in this industry. So yeah, so true. So, so true. It's, it's really, really key. So let, let's get into the practical tactical here. Okay, there's really some secrets here um, to how we do this, and, and I say secrets because they're not obvious, uh, right. and so many people walk right over the top of them. They're they're there, they're in plain sight, but they're secrets because people don't understand how important they are to setting a business up in such a way to deliver lifestyle. Now, again, yeah. if you're in world domination mode and you, you want to be the head of a 500-person coaching firm with offices in 19 countries, this is going to be a little different. Although I will say, even if you're that person, you're setting up a business to work without you ultimately, and so it should be creating lifestyle for you as well. So true. But let's come back to it. Let's talk about what what are, what are some of these secrets? You know, how, how do you see them? How have they implemented? Uh, very practical. Take us through it. Yeah. Okay. So there's going to be some steps in the the evolution of your business if you're going to you know achieve this kind of a thing. So here's the first thing that you want to achieve. Okay. The first thing is you've got to settle on a high value, high margin, one on one coaching niche that you can sell into to create cash flow. So let me unpack that. You're going to need to decide who it is that you're going to coach, and that's going to be based on your particular area of expertise where you've had a lot of success in your previous career. You may say, well, I have background in construction, so I'm going to focus on construction, or manufacturing, or you know, IT, or software. You're going to need to choose a niche, and you're going to need to go out, and you're going to sell high-value, high-margin, one-on-one coaching gigs. Okay, that's what you're going to do. And so for us here at The Coach's Coach, you know, we we teach all our guys. It's going to be a 1000 a month, 1500 a month, 2000 a month, as high as 2500 or 3000 a month. I mean, in my heyday when all I was doing was one-on-one coaching clients, I wouldn't sell a program for less than 2500 per month, and that only took me six hours a month to deliver, okay? Right. So what I'm saying is you're going to choose a niche, and you're going to sell high-value, high-margin, one-on-one coaching programs into that niche, and that's going to create financial sustainability. Now, we found yep. for most business coaches, if they're banking 10, at least, preferably 15000 per month in revenue, which only takes 10 clients to do, right. you're going to be financially sustainable. Uh, not one-time revenue, not one-time engagement. We're talking about long-term, minimum 12-month engagements. Um, and if you don't know our philosophy on that, dive into our free materials. Just, there's tons of them out there, Secrets of a Business Coaching Rockstar, Business Coaching Riches, free massive value we pour into those materials that yeah. they can get. I want to back up for a second on that, that that niche because it's really important to understand. If you've not followed us on this issue, uh, we are strong proponents that – that generalist, geographically focused coaching is essentially a dead market. You're making your job ten times as harder if you're not niching. So yeah. if you don't have a niche and you say, well, I don't know what my niche should be, guess what? There's lots of ways to discover what your niche can be. There's about 101 different really profitable industries. We're not going to dive into that now. But the bottom line is identifying a niche that you can go in and really position yourself well and dominate in is a core component of building a stable business. If you're a generalist, if anybody can be your client, then nobody's your client. You're yeah. going to be able to command a thousand, two thousand dollars per month, and only put in four to six hours per month if you're niched out. That's the bottom line, and that's exactly. going to and that's going to bring you to that place of financial sustainability, yep. ten to fifteen thousand in revenue, and then you know again eight, ten, twelve thousand, whatever it is in profit. Okay, very doable. And by profit, I'm also talking about your drawings. Okay, so yes, you should be able to get yourself in a position where you're drawing eight, ten, twelve thousand per month. You know, based on this kind of revenue. Now, what that's going to do is allow you to, to live. It's going to allow you to survive. It's going to allow you to, you know, begin to feel like you've got the lifestyle that you left your double six-figure job for or retired for or whatever. But that's yeah. only the beginning because you only be able to pull away for two to three weeks at a time because your income is based on your personal productivity. It's based on you showing up at the phone, okay, and yep. doing this one-on-one coaching yep. gig, right? But, exactly. that's so, but you got to do that. Like, you're never going to get to the place of having the lifestyle. So you're never going to do that if you don't get to the point where where you'd be able to draw out of your business at eight, ten, twelve thousand a month. So once yeah. you get there, your next step is to begin investing in the long-term passive income generators. 
Now, what do I mean by that? I'm talking about info products and memberships, okay? People will buy products off the right kind of websites, and they'll invest in memberships off the right kind of websites. So you're going to have to put up the right kind of websites, selling the right kind of in info products, and the right kind of recurring monthly memberships. And that involves building a list, and building a list involves mastering the subject of e-marketing. So if, if you haven't already done, you're going to need to get a hold of our e-marketing pipeline for business coaches courses, okay? But you're going to need to learn how to do e-marketing. You're going to need to learn how to put up the squeeze pages, how to manage the e-marketing uh, software on the back end. You're going to learn how to put out killer content using blog posts, videos, articles, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. But you're going to build a list of subscribers who like what you say. They're tuned into your message. And what happens over time, and it can take three, six, nine months to do this, but what happens over time is that your e-marketing machine begins to monetize that list and create passive income streams, okay? So, you know, Michael and I in our business, we have uh, between 10 and 20,000 per month in passive income from product sales and memberships, okay? Yep. So if you're developing that kind of an income from products and membership sales, all of a sudden you have less dependence upon your personal one-on-one coaching income. And that's yep. what starts to give you the lifestyle you're looking for. And, and to highlight on that for just a second is, you know, just come back and, and, and put this in a model for you. You start from one of the cornerstones here is clear, defensible niche with a good margin from the clients that are within that niche. So the next thing is to develop within the business, as I understand it, a marketing machine with killer content, mm -hmm. <laughs> give away great value, stuff that really – tunes in to the needs of your marketplace. And, and we're not going to try and teach that here on this conversation, but the point is that there's tons of materials in the Coach's Coach system, and if not in the Coach's Coach system, there's just a ton of fantastic free information everywhere about how to do this. So so if, you, if you're just trying to get educated, there's no shortage for the person who's really desiring to figure it out Absolutely. Uh, of this material. Again, no excuses. <laughs> Yeah, okay, it's yeah. out there. Okay, and then so you're going to get this marketing machine in place, and then you've got your content machine in place. And the most important thing about each of these things is it's a system behind the scenes. It's not necessarily you sitting at a desk 24/7 trying to crank out articles all day long. And a lot of guys who take this on, and we've seen this obviously as people have gone through, they they still don't create a team and a system around themselves, and so they never get the leverage factor. Yeah. What you do is you have a team of writers, uh, video producers. You're going to give them the big ideas, right? Your intellectual yep. property, your mental models. You're going to give them that stuff, but your writers are going to write the blog posts, write the tweets, write the Facebook posts, and all the rest of it. You're going to have somebody that produces the videos to put them up on YouTube and all this kind of stuff. Your team can do all that for you. And if you don't want to build your team, you know, there are teams for hire that will do that. You know, we can yep. do that for you. But point here is you, you get started in the business by developing sustainable level of income through one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, yep. and that's your first port of call. Your yep. second one is develop the online e-marketing machine and your content production machine and build your list. Here's where these two come together. Here's the exciting part. What happens then is you've got this beautiful database of people who are consuming your content. They're excited about your message. They, they believe in what you're about. Whenever you want another one-on-one -on -one coaching client, all you got to do is troll through that list with an outsourced telemarketing company, and boom, you have another one-on-one -on -one coaching client if you need it. Okay? Yeah. And this is a key secret here, okay, because a lot of guys use telemarketing, but they use it for strictly cold calling. Oh, yeah. This is not cold calling. Right. This is reaching down into a, a bucket of large, healthy, fat trout, okay, <laughs> right, right, right. who have nowhere else to go but into your hands. Right. Okay. Right. And they're expecting you. They want you to come get them. Okay. <laughs> That's true. And, because and you're so, dropping fish food right into the bucket every day, you know. How, how many premium coaching contracts in the last two weeks would you say you've converted? Three out of three. Three out of three. But this is something you, you didn't, you didn't even really have to do much to crank it up other than literally call a telemarketer and say, book some CCSs. Yeah, that's right. And look, there's guys all around the world. This is not just the United States. This is any country where this is happening. Uh, and everybody that's applying this e-marketing methodology, when it's matured, and again, it can take six to 12 months to mature this kind of a process, but this is the net result. So once you've got that in place, now you've got passive income coming off the products, coming off the membership site sales, and you can do as much one-on-one -on -one coaching as you want, okay? Because most of us get into business coaching because we like the one-on-one -on -one interaction. So you got your one-on-one -on -one coaching, you got your passive income from products and memberships, and you've got a team to run the business for you. So if you need to go away for an extended period of time, you still got a lot of income coming in from your products and memberships, and you've got one-on-one -on -one coaching revenue to supplement it.
So that's Absolutely. really it. I mean, that's the path to having this kind of a lifestyle business, Michael. Absolutely. And then uh, one of the other things that I love in there, which I consider to be the cherry on top, is product launches throughout once you uh, get your system set up. Yeah. Because it's nice big tranches of capital that come in by creating products that actually stick around and do the work when you're not around. So true. You know, it, So it's great to have those assets around because it keeps you present even when you're not present. Yeah. You know, plus it's nice big chunks of capital as you plan those out throughout the year. So I, I think there's a really important point here I want to jump on it, which is this is not this is not get rich quick guys. Yeah. This is not instant oatmeal. Okay. You don't just add water and poof, you've got everything. But it's a heck of a lot simpler than it used to be and it's proven in this industry. Yeah. So if you're wondering, okay, yeah, I'm sure that works for these guys and those guys. No, it works in the coaching industry and it's working for a large number of coaches, coach clients who are implementing this exact same structure in their businesses and seeing stellar results. I mean, I think of guys like Andy Clark come to mind. You yeah. know, got great <laughs> systems. They've got a fantastic niche with um, optometrists and he's just yeah. killing it. I mean, he's just yeah. slaying it. Most of the coaching we're doing these days with Andy is Okay, so now that business is working so easily, what are you going to do next, right? I mean, exactly. Yep. Okay, yep. well, so here's the deal, guys. So these are the stages, right? So the first stage is high value, high margin, one on one coaching program. Look, you got to master that. It's first port of call. It's the way you live and survive in this industry. And if that's where you're at, go get into the 10 day trial. Go get into it. Yep. You know, download the Coach Control Center. Put together your marketing and sales plan. Prosecute that plan with a vengeance. Go get some one-on-one coaching clients. Make some money, right? Absolutely. And then once you've got that going or as you start getting that going, go into our e-marketing pipeline. Learn how to create this online uh, magnet, <laughs> you know, client magnet. Learn how to create the content. Put it out there using all these modern technologies, right? And then in the process – You'll begin creating a database, and then you're going to be able to leverage that database to – and these things build on each other, right? So the one-on-one -on -one coaching, they love the membership stuff you put together, and the membership stuff that you've got to, can be segued and parlayed into one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? So mm -hmm. that's really what we would suggest that you do. Michael, additional thoughts on that? Well, what I love about the e-marketing pipeline is it makes it even s sicker. I mean, it's just like it's such a low-cost acquisition strategy after you've got it implemented yeah. uh, that literally the cost of acquisition drops down to negligible when you really look at it over the span of what it costs you to run a functional e-marketing system. So, so, so it's it's a great way to drive additional profitability into your business and most importantly, predictability. Yeah, and that's the thing that I think screws up a lot of guys in creating a stable business that can give them the lifestyle we're talking about. If you're sitting there going, you know what, I really want to take on this sabbatical, this lifestyle concept. I think this is an important priority in my life, whatever that's going to look like for you specifically, whether it's six weeks in Honduras on an island or whether it's in, in Tuscany in the fall for the wine harvest. Uh, you know, it, Whatever your experiences are that you're looking for in life and the people you're looking to experience it with, it ain't going to happen unless you build a plan for it. Yeah. So now you know what the outcome is, the destiny you want. This is a sequential, replicatable pattern that you can use to get there, but you have to get started, and you have to make sure you have a system behind you that can scale and that can be stable to make sure that when you do take advantage of it uh, and take on these sabbaticals, your business hums along while you're gone. Yeah. And, and what you come back to is a business that's just as healthy or healthier than when you left. But you've got to be willing to own the work it's going to take to get it set up properly. And it's really not that hard. You know, it's so much easier than when you and I got started on it, wouldn't you say? Oh, my goodness. Like, oh, man, Michael, I could have saved myself so many years of effort if I would have had the stuff that's now available on our program. So, folks, here's what you need to do, okay? Head out to mycoachescoach.com. If you know that your first port of call is to get to that 10 to 15,000 per month in drawings, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 a month in revenue, okay, you need to get into our 10 day basic trial and you, we just, you just need to learn the fundamentals of the business, right, Michael? I mean, absolutely. You got to learn the fundamentals, right? If you already have a pretty good sustainable business, you know, you're making a good living as a business coach, but now it's time to automate so you can create that passive income that you want to supplement the one on one coaching that you're doing, you know, the personal exertion stuff, then you need to go out again to our, our website, mycoachescoach.com. Click the little button that says e-marketing pipeline for business coaches, right? And you need to go through that course. And that will teach you how to lay the foundation for an automated passive income generating stream of products and subscription services. Okay, so that's what you need to do from here. Michael, any closing thoughts on this uh, interview? You know, I, I just a personal recognition. And you, you spend a lot of time in this industry uh, being a forerunner. 
uh, and driving for systematization in the industry, driving for accountability, driving for good structure, and continuing to drive us in the area of being congruent with the very things that we espouse by living it yourself. And so I just want to thank you for that, uh, and I'm excited for all the people who are on this call who have heard this message and know that now's the time. Not going to waste another minute. Let's get on with it. I mean, heck, you have no reason not to do it. you got a 10-day free trial to kick the tires, do everything you want to do with it, and get huge value out of it and see if this is the right path for you to get what you want from your coaching business. So go online, mycoachescoach.com. 10-day trial if you need to get to the 10 to 15,000 recurring regular stable business. And if you're there and you're looking for what's the next step, then you want to sign up for the eMarketing Pipeline course. We'll see you on the other side. 